All right, hello everybody and welcome. This is the Hypnotic Workers August 2016 webinar titled When Nothing is Working. As we often do, you all have voted inside of the Facebook chat room on this specific topic, and this is the presentation that I'm sharing with you here this month. Welcome to the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast with Jason Lynette, your professional resource for hypnosis training and outstanding business success. Here's your host, Jason Lynette. This is the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast, session number 97, When Nothing is Working. It's Jason Lynette here, and let's talk about success. Success is a rather interesting topic because we can hedge off one simple discussion right away in that very often a potential client might call you and maybe they just outward ask the question, hey, what's your success rate on this specific issue? Now, what I find interesting about that is, uh, and I say this not to play a sleight of mouth game, not to hedge off a potentially challenging question, yet there are certain things that we work on that, well, measuring a specific percentage of success really would not be appropriate, you know, because issues like stress and fear and anxiety, these are issues that clients are supposed to have. I mean, no, not just clients. These are issues that people are meant to have from time to time. And I would equate that by describing that, you know, you have virus software perhaps on a computer. Some people have an alarm system on their car or their home, and you want that alarm system, you want that virus software to fire off only at the times that it's appropriate to fire off. So it's not that we're eradicating that entire signal of fear or stress or anxiety. It's more so the fact that, you know, what are we going for? We're looking to recalibrate the settings. Now, granted, there are categories like uh, I see a lot of people for quitting smoking, and that's a what we call digital issue. It's either a one or a zero. It's either on or it's off. Yet, let's take, for example, that I see an abundance of clients nowadays who want to have better control over their alcohol consumption. Notice the difference there. I did not say they wanted to quit drinking. I see those. Yet the majority that I work with are people that don't want to go the full route of abstinence and instead, you know, want to be able to have just that one glass, that one bottle and call it a day there. So how do you go about measuring a specific percentage on an issue such as that? So I bring these themes up because as we talk about the process, well, first of all, I would caution you and I'd very comfortably say, check with your own attorney on what I'm about to say. Yet my strategy for avoiding discomfort when something is not quite clicking, something is not quite connecting the way that we'd like it to be, is that I am doing my best in my process to never make claims that I cannot back up. I will not with uh, respect, though really I will not with some disrespect reference the exact name of the hypnotist I'm about to mention here. Yet it's somebody who I saw at a major convention years ago who gets up, and I may have the number off, uh, but he got up and says, I have a 98.2% success rate with stop smoking clients. Why do I say that? Because it sounds convincing. Um, No, I'm sorry. Why do you say that? No, it's because you're lying. So I've got to give full credit with respect to Scott Sandlin for the phrase that I'd often use here. Uh, And here's the exact phrasing the way that I've modified this statement, which would be that anecdotally from those people that I hear back from the people who make use of all the scheduled appointments and make use of the tools that I share with you. That's the group that I could say is comfortably close to about 95 percent successful. However, for that rare group of people who may not have the exact result that they were looking for, I can also make this statement very comfortably. Most cases, they're not blaming the hypnosis. Does that make sense to you? And that's rather similar to what my phrasing would be to a client. I I would mention that this is part of my philosophy with hypnosis, that it's a tool And chances are, if you're a longtime listener of this program, I mean, here we are with session number 97. And if you're brand new to this, well, rewind, back up, check out sessions one through 96. Yet hypnosis is a tool. Hypnosis is a modality. 
and the tool is only as good as it's put to use. So several other practitioners I've met over the years have had this type of story. Here's this woman that I worked with who wanted to quit drinking Diet Coke. There were no health-related goals with why she wanted to quit drinking Diet Coke. She was a multi-level marketing health and wellness re uh, representative, and she just felt like a hypocrite that there she was all day talking about, change your brands, buy from me instead, and she'd go home and drink a chemical-ridden Diet Coke. I say this with full disclosure, here's my empty bottle of Coke Zero next to me. A little bit of aspartame keeps you running. So she didn't want to drink Diet Coke anymore, and... Really, without any other health-related goals, then I just don't want to feel like a hypocrite. Here we were in the sessions just pummeling away, don't drink Diet Coke, don't drink Diet Coke, don't drink Diet Coke. Of course, phrase as a positive. Doing the water routine, as some of you have seen me do before. Uh, getting her to taste the Diet Coke for what it actually was. So the story goes, she is at her sister's house. It's like a year later. And there's that gray and white, silver and white, whatever color there is, can in the fridge. And she thinks, well, it's been a while. I guess I can have just one. And I'll shortcut the story here. She calls me up and she says, Jason, I need to come back to you. I'm drinking Diet Coke again. And I ask her, well, catch me up. How's it going? Well, it tastes like battery acid and I'm still drinking it. The hypnosis stopped working. And I had to recap the story that one, it tastes like battery acid, and two, you're still drinking it. Uh, I'll change the name. Well, Barbara, it sounds like the hypnosis is still working, yet you're the one who stopped working. So again, what I'd caution you is do not throw out specific statistics. Do not throw out bold claims that you cannot back up. Now, you can reference major studies, you can reference research, you can reference clinical studies, clinical trials, yet if you're throwing out numbers, be prepared to back it up. Now, I introduced this as a theme because we're about to jump into my private hypnosis training community. The story goes, if you're brand new to me, is that uh, for several years now, I've always had video cameras running during my trainings. And the result of this was a little while ago, organizing through about 14 terabytes, that's right, terabytes, of hypnosis trainings and deciphering the information down into an online hypnosis training community titled Hypnotic Workers. Why is it called Hypnotic Workers? Because it's all about people who train hypnosis, yet also do hypnosis. So you're learning from me as I'm refining what I do. You're learning from the community as well. And check it out over at hypnoticworkers.com, where you can see the preview of this at this point, more than 80 plus hours of on-demand hypnosis training. It's the entire hypnotherapy digital brain dump from Jason Lynette. Everything from hypnotic inductions to philosophy to deepening strategies to methods for hypnotic phenomena to change strategies you will not find anywhere else. Plus, we don't need any more scripts in hypnosis. What we need are more transcripts. So really, inside of Hypnotic Workers, there are full client sessions. From the moment of walking in the door to the moment walking out the door, real client demonstrations with everything from migraine removal to stop smoking to weight loss to pain relief to uh, anxiety removal, all sorts of content inside of there. And what you're about to listen to here is something that I'm sharing from our private community. Each and every month we gather together for a private community webinar. And the one from, uh, I believe, August 2016, if I'm getting the date right, was simply titled, when nothing is working. And in this presentation, I'm going to share several, I believe seven, but for here, I'm going to say several actionable strategies you can make use of inside of your hypnosis session in those dreaded moments where nothing is working. Now, again, from my perspective, it's not that the hypnosis is working. There are no such thing as resistant clients. There were only inflexible practitioners. So in this content you're about to interact with, 
you're going to learn some flexible strategies to become even more effective to hedge off this moment when nothing is working. To get more content just like this, head over to hypnoticworkers.com. It is a massive library with tons of feedback from students inside of it, and you can get started for just $47. Check that out, hypnoticworkers.com. Though, let's jump right into the content. Here we are. This is session number 97, When Nothing is Working. So the presentation here is titled When Nothing is Working, which is kind of a general overall theme of potential pitfalls that you might run into when you're working with a client. You know, you've got that person in front of you and here you are doing everything you think is right. And yet it's just not clicking or maybe even worse. It's clicking in the session. It's going outstanding in the session. And then they're in front of you the next week and nothing is budged, which I would openly share, having talked to hypnotists from around the world and attended various conventions over the years, meetups and uh, chat rooms and uh, forums and Facebook groups. If you ever meet someone who says that this doesn't happen, let me just say it, they are lying to you. There are many schools of thought, and I'm not just... uh, Uh, beating up the one that I often indirectly beat up. There are many schools of thought. Some of you are smirking at that way too quickly. There are many schools of thought that would say if you're not using this specific modality of change, you're just not going to get results. And I'd be the first to tell you that's not the case. That's not true. And that kind of frustration is really why Hypnotic Workers was launched. You know, And this is not just one school of thought, because there are some that would say that unless you're using this specific NLP technique, you're not going to get results. There's this other group that would say that if you're not regressing every single client, you're not going to get results. And it's that metaphor that when the only tool that you have is a hammer, everything starts to look like a nail. So really, in this presentation here today... In this uh, extra content that we're adding into the Hypnotic Workers Library, my goal is to give you, I'm looking at the number of slides, about a dozen or so strategies, uh, a dozen or so different reframes, shifts, different perceptions that you can bring to your process working with your client. So when nothing is working, you've got some options in terms of making things work. So inside of this presentation, this is going to refer back to all different types of content that's already inside of the workers library. It may even spur some other uh, presentations and ideas for future webinars, future content to come your way. So I'd encourage you to uh, leave your feedback for this presentation over in the Facebook group or shoot me an email, though, if you are in the Facebook group and you shoot me an email lovingly, I will send you back to the Facebook group. That's why we have it. Let's jump in. This is the August 2016 webinar, Hypnotic Workers, When Nothing is Working. So one of my first round strategies when nothing is working is to go compliant. And what I mean by that is I want you to read into that statement here on the screen is to, is to fold in more strategies to make my client more and more a part of their own process. You know, so it's a place where it's going to become a little bit more action oriented. So it's a place where I'm probably going to record some sort of audio. I'm probably going to teach them some sort of technique. If my recliner has been reclined, I'm going to sit them upright. I might even stand them up. I'm going to break them out of their possibly passive style to instead bring them into a more active, more compliant, proceed suggestibility style of work. And there's a whole module on compliance, proceed suggestibility if this information is new to you. It's inside of the workers' library. Yeah, I know there's like 100 hours of stuff, but come on, watch it all. So by going compliant, I would share with you, let me give you the negative description of this first. And I'm going to say it first just to get out of the way, because there's a moment where a few years ago, I think it might have been HypnoThoughts, I think it might have been some Facebook group, that I posted something of this theme and someone respectfully took it the wrong way. Because my goal, I'll give you the negative first. My goal is not, here's a moment where, let's go with a smoker. 
here's a moment where you're back in front of me and you haven't quit smoking. Nothing has shifted. And then maybe I record you a custom audio program and I teach you a couple of techniques and then you're back in front of me again a third time and nothing has shifted and yet you also have not listened to the audio program. So the criticism of the strategy could possibly be that I gave them homework as a mechanism to prove that they weren't motivated, they weren't ready. And that is never the perception, that is never the mindset I am working with a client uh, within. Because, well, I'd rather have the raving fan. I'm also the business guy. I'd rather have them out there speaking the gospel of how wonderful Virginia hypnosis is and how outstanding their change was. So really at its core and just personally, uh, it doesn't feel good when someone is not getting results and they're seemingly frustrated in front of you. So what do I mean by go compliant? I'm going to fold in more action strategies. I'm going to fold in more things that they should be doing. And really the goal is about bringing them back into a more active style, letting them again, the metaphor that I'd often use with a client if it is a matter of being way too passive in the session, the metaphor that I would give them is that they are still the ones driving the car and I'm just the GPS showing them a better way to get there. So they still have to find their keys. They still have to get in the car. They still have to buckle the seatbelt. They still have to turn on the ignition and they still have to know how to drive the car itself. So really I'm the guide. You could be sitting passenger seat of, uh, uh, of a, a road trip with somebody and giving them the best directions, and they're going, nope, I know a better way. Yet, inside of the hypnosis process, the reason they're there in that chair is because they needed someone to show them a better way to get there. Likewise, the reason that you were there navigating in the passenger seat of the front seat of the car was that you were the one there to guide them to a better way. So, go compliant. When you find that moment where a client is just not shifting, nothing is moving, Work on mechanisms within your own style to bring them back inside of the process, to bring them back into the experience. So again, simplest of strategies, really at times it's as simple as this. I'm going to sit them upright. I might even stand them up for a moment. Even as you stand there, you can go deeper and deeper in this hypnotic state of focus and relaxation. Though I also might begin to fold in some better mechanisms of self-hypnosis strategies they can make use of at home. Uh, so again, that might be a custom audio program. Uh, I'll put a link to this over in the Facebook group. You can actually just uh, go to worksmarthypnosis.com forward slash Zoom. Uh, that'll link you over to the Zoom H6 audio recorder. It's a bit of a high-tech recorder uh, that oftentimes is sitting in my office. And if I'm going to record a client a custom audio, I would openly share that I do not do that on my own time. I do that on their time. Yet the mechanism that I often make use of would be that the session has wrapped up maybe about five, 10 minutes early. And then I'll actually say, hey, let me give you something you can actually make use of at home. And let's actually do this here. And I'll pick up the little voice recorder. Again, you can see the one that I use at worksmarthypnosis.com forward slash Zoom, Z-O-O-M. And that's the recorder that I use with the uh, dead kitten header on the top. If you've seen me at a convention or a workshop, you've seen me use this thing. You can also plug in external microphones. It's actually my travel podcasting microphone. Although full credit... So again, I will actually record that five to 10 minute custom audio when they're there in front of me. Because again, I want to make sure it's something that they're going to make use of. Though full credit goes to Meredith McDonough. Meredith is actually a hypnotist in the local Alexandria area where I work. And oddly enough, if you're inside of Hypnotic Business Systems and you've heard me talk about uh, BNI, uh, Meredith is now a member at the BNI chapter I used to be a member of. And here's Meredith coming up with the most brilliant of strategies to do a custom audio for a client. She borrows their phone and she has them open up the voice recorder on their phone. I'm assuming kick the phone into airplane mode and you could actually record that audio program directly on their phone and they can replay it later. 
as opposed to what do I do? One of my uh, designer programmers goes in, adds music, and then sends it off to the person. Uh, well, with what Meredith does, you've got the audio already on their device and there is no post-production. How brilliant is that? Though I'd also share that, again, it's not necessarily an audio program. It might be teaching a technique. It might be, I'm a big fan of the NLP strategy of collapsing anchors, where you're building two opposing uh, emotional forces, firing them both off at the same time, and then in my style, future pacing it forward, which is a technique they can make use of anytime, anywhere, and nobody knows they're doing something. So I'm going to give them things to do that... Unfortunately, if they are in front of me again and they haven't even used the technique, well, then we maybe do have to talk motivation. Though my real goal of go compliant is instead to bring them back inside of the process. That's what go compliant is all about. So let's move forward. Go back to the basics. So at one point, I was trained to drink the Kool-Aid that you had to age regress every single client that you've ever possibly worked with. And if you did not do that, uh, you were not being a good hypnotist, which, um, no. I mean, first of all, go to the history of Dr. John Hartland uh, of the ego strengthening technique fame. And even Hartland, a man who was violently protesting this concept of if you take away a negative behavior, it's going to come about somewhere else even worse. Hartland was simply delivering ego strengthening, confidence boosting suggestions. And by doing so, simply found that he was often negating the issue and hypnoanalysis, hypnotic age regression just was not necessary. So in the words of either Sheila Granger or Mark Carlin, not every issue is a deep-seated emotional challenge. Some of them are, but not all of them. So I'd openly tell you the story briefly here of I'm working with a guy that I am, I am trying to launch into an age regression. And I mean, all signs are telling me, systems go, let's do this thing. Just nothing. Nothing. And this is probably like a year into my process. And uh, if you've heard it inside of the workers content, when I first got started, I'd have a couple of blank sheets of paper for taking notes. I would have uh, my Elman induction printed out. I'd have a page of deepeners similar to the one that's inside of the go deep uh, module inside of this course. I would then have my emerging pattern. Uh, with the red reinforcer, the uh, time distortion setup, and then uh, the page of uh, emerging pattern, which is probably identical to what's inside of the emerging techniques in this content. And then I would have a flexible middle. And the flexible middle would basically be, here is all of my scripts and outlines for weight loss. Here are all my scripts and outlines for stopping smoking. And this guy, here were all of my scripts and outlines for overcoming insomnia, improving the quality of sleep, falling asleep more easily. You get the idea. And I'm working with this dude and just nothing with the regression is firing. And I made a mistake next, which I previously uh, lambasted and uh, completely went on a tirade against a former student of mine on, well, still student of mine, that I'm really of the opinion if the age regression fails, you're kind of silly to go after interactive techniques of a similar style. So while it's not appropriate to train the, uh, the Roy Hunter, Charles Tebbets parts therapy process inside of the workers content, because that is something that Roy teaches and pick up his book about uh, resolving hypnotic inner conflict. Uh, it's a fantastic book and it's purple. So, you know, it's gotta be good. Again, work smart hypnosis, 50 shades of purple. So, Here's a guy that, you know, the student of mine, the age regression didn't fire. So what did he do? I'm going to go with the Hunter Tebbit style of parts therapy, which just bombed even faster. So what do I mean by go back to the basics? I got to tell you in this session, I just went, what the hell? Why not? And I read this guy a script. I read him a script. I forget which one it was. It might have been from the Jerry Kind book. It might have been something from, oh, who knows where. And just, that's all I did. I mean, it was that moment of retreat. 
And granted, I probably wouldn't do that today. I would instead go to content that you're aware of, whether it's straight line transformation, whether it's uh, building kinesthetic anchors, whether it's whatever else is inside of this content and hypnotic workers. But I just went to the basics. And damn it if he wasn't sleeping like a baby from that day forward. I mean, go to the Yelp page for Virginia Hypnosis. Uh, while you're there, read the one negative review that I do have and proudly have, as she complained that the first session was too long, the second session was too short. Though I did respond to her and she changed it from two stars to four stars. Read that on your own time. Though I can actually reference there's a woman by the name of Sharon on my Yelp page who, to this day, I keep in touch with her, actually having lunch with her in a couple of weeks. Uh, she's still down about 40 pounds. And I never went beyond direct suggestion and imagery with her. Ever. Never a bit of regression. Never even fancy NLP strategies. I mean, there's things that are NLP in style, yet it was very much a do this, do this, eat this way, move that way style of process. So sometimes we might be overcomplicating our technique, you know? Sometimes we just need to be a hypnotist and say hypnotic words. That's what I mean by go back to the basics. And you're going to see this theme pop up again a little bit later in some of the other uh, some of the other slides here that sometimes just backing up and simplifying the technique. You know, it's where those of you that make use of any sort of metaphorical work, Ericksonian storytelling, you will run into clients sometimes that I got to say it, you either had to give them a pre-talk or they just didn't get it. There's a woman I worked with recently that, to our credit, she immediately shifted her behaviors involving eating. She used to eat a lot of junk food. She wanted to swap over to a more paleo style of eating. And she had this, I mean, disgusting habit of chewing the skin on the inside of her mouth to the point it was practically bleeding and infected, as lovely as that sounds. And I went very, very metaphorical, very Ericksonian in our second session. And she left, I mean, a little offended, a little bothered by going, the hell was that? I mean, you just told stories about movies. You just told stories about uh, pole vaulters. You just told some of the stuff that's inside of the worker's content. And it's the third session, though. She's in front of me. She goes, I don't know what you did last week, but everything is better. So needless to say, I told her more stories in the third session. Uh, though, Then again, I've had some clients that just that style of work just did not click. So I just went as literal as possible. In the morning, you will wake up and you will do this. And then after you've done that, you will do this series of actions. And after you've completed those actions, this is what you'll now be doing and this is how you'll be feeling. So sometimes just simplify your work. And oftentimes, that might be that thing that actually makes it happen. Go deeper. Go deeper. Uh, which I would share, again, from the Jason Lynette Hypnotic Workers Work Smart Hypnosis School of Thought. All levels of hypnosis are created equal, though some are more equal than others. Yeah, where my George Orwell fan's at. So what level of hypnosis do we need to produce change? Any, but again, all levels are equal, though some are more equal than others. So really, I would prefer you get them down to a working level of what we often define as somnambulism, which is a level of hypnosis where amnesia by suggestion, anesthesia suggestions, as well as profound hallucinations, both negative and positive, can be produced. So very often, if they are not responding, maybe you did not have them technically deep enough inside of the process. Now, granted, inside of the models of NLP, inside of the models of conversational hypnosis, I mean, look at the second session that's about to go up in the library and the weight loss sessions with uh, Denise. With Denise, you see me in the preframe of that session running every technique on her before the process began. And it's my mechanism of screening the strategies to guarantee, yeah, that's going to work. And I'm getting the change conversationally. So there was no, quote, hypnotic depth. Though if we're inside of the process 
and just it's not firing, I would encourage you employ more hypnotic deepeners. Uh, I had another slide that I got rid of that I combined instead with this one uh, uh, to be instead of go phenomenal, just keep it with go deeper, though you're going to see that theme is going to pop up later. But again, go deeper, whether it's making use of some sort of uh, hypnotic phenomenon, whether it's some sort of deepening strategy. I'm a big fan. Again, this kind of links back. At this point, some of these are going to start to overlap from one to the other. I'm a big fan of kinesthetic deepening. I mean, go to the go deep module and look at the shoulder press deepener. If you're not using that, oh my God, is it powerful. And going back to the go compliant slide a little while ago, that's often a strategy I might make use of because simply doing that shoulder press startles them out of that passive mindset, drives them deeper into hypnosis. And just that hand on the shoulder pressing down as they exhale is very often enough to get the process back on track. So again, there's going to be some overlap from one of these strategies to the other. Though again, back the pattern from Dave Elman, back up, distract, deepen, re-enter. So like if you watch the content of the Dave Elman induction, if something has not connected, you know, that's the place to back up, deepen the process, and give the suggestion in another format. Hey, here's a freebie. Uh, here, hey, this one's on me. Uh, beautiful little suggestion you can make use of. Hey, we'll do that again, and this time notice what's different. You can deliver the exact same pattern again and get a different response simply with those words. Hey, let's do that again, and this time notice what's different. And again, check the transcription of this for any specific phraseology that you'd like to pick up as well. Moving on to another one. Here we go. The next strategy would be to go another direction. Now, the next couple of themes may seem to overlap, but I felt it necessary to separate them because there's going to be some nuances from one idea, one thematic score to another, as it were. So... Perhaps in the style of going back to basics, going another direction. Uh, what I would mean by that would simply be that we can go in other directions. And the next couple of slides are going to be examples of this one right here. So, for example, you can go another style. Go another style. So, I mentioned previously, well, I do not teach the Roy Hunter, Charles Tebbets parts mediation, parts therapy process inside of this content. I don't teach the Simpson protocol for a pretty good reason. That's someone else's stuff. Uh, and they have products for those. And if you hear me reference things in general, it means I like them. I do have a style that uh, if I am ever criticizing something, I do not reveal what it is. So basically, if you hear me talking about someone or some product or some book, take that as a nod that I think it's good because I do tend to respectfully censor myself on these things. So go another style. So it's where, you know, parts therapy is a process. Parts therapy is a category. So inside of the worker's content, you do have the, uh, the kinesthetic squash segment, which is my variation on an NLP visual squash, which kind of goes back to the standard parts therapy process. You've also got the new behavior programmer, which is pretty similar to a new behavior generator. Again, just different twists on it that we can often go another style, another process within the same category. You know, that kind of relates to this next concept of going thematic. So going thematic, what would I mean by that? Well, consider if you've gone through the entire age regression module here inside of hypnotic workers. Well, that's this massive process that could be beautifully interactive. Again, my perception of age regression is that it's all about getting that client to the place where they are now doing direct suggestion hypnosis on themselves. That's what my intention of age regression is all about. It's the catch and release. It's the death and resurrection. I am becoming less and less concerned about the backstory of where we pull that slingshot back to. I'm more concerned about where that thing lands once we let go of it. So going thematic, if you are doing age regression, I mean, hey, even if you're doing parts therapy, even if you're doing a fast phobia cure, 
which content on that is coming to this workers library rather soon i'm going to be filming some nlp stuff and adding that into this as well again this library is constantly growing this recording is happening again august 2016 just to date myself so going thematic you know if we're doing any of these interactive strategies we could pivot and we could instead do that technique in a direct suggestion format. Would that be, in my opinion, your absolute best possibility? I would probably say no. Though I can reference times that the age regression just wasn't clicking, just wasn't firing. The parts therapy process, even doing the, uh, the Hunter Tebbets variation where the parts are speaking on behalf of themselves, you know, that just wasn't that just wasn't clicking that day. So what did I do? I simply began to run the process in a thematic style, simply by doing it in a direct suggestion format. And uh, check this out, it worked. So again, it's not this mindset that if you didn't do it this one way, it didn't work. No, take it as the nod that that client perhaps just needed a different style of doing it that client needed a different application of it. So if your beautifully interactive process is not firing off interactive, go thematic. And what I mean by that is run it as if it was just simply direct suggestion. Again, when all else fails, apply suggestion. That's my principle of hypnosis in many times. So the opposite of going thematic would instead to be to go process. So what I mean by that is the opposite. So take everything I said over the last four minutes and just reverse it. Moving on. No, let's get specific here. So in terms of going process, maybe it is something direct suggestion. And instead, kind of similar to going compliant, I'm going to bring you back inside of the process with even greater detail. I'm going to bring you back inside of the experience. And as you do this, what do you feel now? And how do you feel that in your body? And what's going on now? And project yourself in the future. What's different? And as I pick up this hand and drop it, be there. It's later today. What's happening now? And I'm just getting you more interactive in a process-oriented approach rather than a direct suggestion approach. So again, look at the differences between going thematic and going process. This is why there are some who do these really long sessions. And again, it's not just one school of thought. They do these really, really long suggestions, really long sessions with forgiveness, where it's the old, um, I think I first encountered this from Jerry Kine. I've seen this in the Gil Boyne School of Thought, the, the Five Pathers as well, the beating the pillow uh, forgiveness style, which I would share. There have been moments where that was the absolute best thing I could have done with a client. But then again, there were other moments where just simply suggesting, as it reads out of uh, Roy Hunter, Art of Hypnotherapy, to release this person of the, of the apology they've owed you for all these years. To credit Michael Elner for a funny phrase about uh, forgiveness being the release of hope that things could have gone differently. So take this moment, forgive your past, and when you've done that, either nod your head or say the words, it's done. You know, lock them off in a double bind, get the change, move on. Where rather than spending two full sessions, three full sessions, four full sessions just inside of uh, doing the forgiveness process, I satisfied the same results by a simple stream of direct suggestions. Not every case needs the beating of the pillow. So again, thematic process, choose your favorite method. So moving forward... In terms of going another direction, we can also just simply go behavioral. So it's the story of a local hypnotist uh, who calls me up and says, I'm working with this woman for a sugar addiction and we're kind of stalled in our process. And I say, what's going on? And this kind of dates back to the previous uh, bullet point here that the experience basically was they were doing all this forgiveness work on what the father had said to this woman so many years ago. To which I just had to say, why don't you just be a hypnotist and work on her sugar addiction? So behavioral, what did he end up doing? He was suggesting eating healthy whole foods. He was suggesting exercise motivation. He was suggesting strategies to fill her plate metaphorically and literally with all those wonderful things she should be doing instead. And she was so busy doing those things, she didn't get caught up in the sugar. 
So sometimes you just have to make the process into Simon Says. As I do this, you do that. Simon Says, do this. So sometimes, again, we get caught up in the backstory. We get caught up in the context of the content of the back history. And instead, we need to go into the context of, again, how do you feel now? How would you rather feel? What are those things you're doing now? What are those things you'd rather be doing? And let your process be entirely go behavioral, future pacing their desired outcome. And if you want a really simple strategy to do that, play with perceptual positions. You know, whether they're imagining a movie theater or an empty stage, or you really don't even need a thing to do this. You know, just be there and imagine watching yourself, observing yourself, doing these things you'd like to be doing. And then step inside of it. Notice how well that fits. Feel it in your own body. And just toggle that back and forth, back and forth. And that's often enough to condition the new behaviors. So sometimes you just have to be a hypnotist and talk about the issue they came in for. On the other side, though, to back up the other side is sometimes you've got to go emotional. Which again, it all stems from that feeling inside of you that has everything to do with why you blank. Why you smoke, why you drink, why you eat, why you have this fear, why you... anything. So, this is probably the flaw of many hypnosis trainings that are kind of stuck within the written word because they're just kind of in the practicality of behaviors. Well, even Hartland would say that that's not always the case. So um, sometimes you just got to dig into those emotions. So actually the, the sessions that are in the library, the weight loss sessions with Denise, that's the feedback after our process. You have the first two sessions that I did with her recorded and um, we didn't record the third one for a simple reason. Uh, I did the limitless self-hypnosis there because she came in and she was raving all of my emotional eating is gone. Go back and watch those videos too, because you'll see that from session one to session two, this is a clear example. Session one, I went behavioral, but then session two, I went after the emotional hook of the process and that's what got the change. So again, the NLP presupposition, there is no failure. There is only feedback. The feedback with those sessions with Denise was that I did not need to go with a behavioral route. Instead, I needed to go emotional. Now, granted, the style you saw me do it in those sessions is very often how I do it. I begin basic. I begin direct suggestion and imagery. I begin by talking literally about the things they've come in for. And only then after that do I start to get metaphorical, do I start to go into emotional triggers as well, unless you're coming in for something emotional. My favorite theme is the one coming up next which would be that of going kinesthetic. Now, this is going to link to the next one because we can get into the behaviors. We can get into the emotions. However, we can also go in and get into the feelings and not just the feeling of I'm sad, I'm happy, I'm depressed, I'm anxious. No, I mean, in terms of the kinesthetic feelings, the submodalities of how they process those sensations in their body. So this is that whole playing with feelings module, my application of glove anesthesia, because it's in many ways a moment of going directly into the kinesthetics of it, which links to this next and final slide, this idea of going surreal, where they're expecting changing behaviors. They might be expecting changing emotions, but this is a place where I'm going to go into the techniques and uh, go full Salvador Dali on them. And my real intention in this moment is to completely break their perception of reality. You know, it's going to be added to the content in the next couple of uh, days, but at HypnoThoughts Live 2016, this will be over in the Hypnotic Phenomenon module. There's a story that I told in that workshop that I taught at HT Live of a woman by the name of Stephanie that Stephanie calls up and Stephanie says something that most hypnotists would have turned her away for. I know I need to quit smoking, but I don't think I want to. And I fed her a Dave Elman line, or at least my paraphrase of it. If you follow my instructions, I know I can help you. However, if you're not willing to follow my instructions, 
I don't know a thing in the world that will help you. Would you like to come in? And she says, yes. And my entire goal of that session was appealing to the behaviors. Wasn't going to crack it. Appealing to the emotions. That, that wasn't the motivator yet. However, going in and respectfully breaking her perception of reality, going full surreal on the experience, I was throwing every bit of hypnotic phenomenon I could at this woman. I mean, anything and everything I could possibly think of was folding into that session. I was making the mouth dry with the water trick. I was doing the eye lock and the arm lock from Hypnotic Phenomenon. I did the glove anesthesia segment. That's usually a session two strategy for me, but I did that in the very first session. And there's a payoff moment that occurred where I had her right hand stuck to the chair. And the simple suggestion was, open your eyes, it sticks tighter. Look at that thing, isn't that weird? And she's just sitting there going... This is so weird. And I just felt the need then just to, again, Sean Michael Andrews line. When you stick them to one thing, you could stick them to something else. You know what's really weird, Stephanie? I haven't even mentioned it yet, though your left hand is also stuck as well. And now she's there with both of her hands. She muttered some sort of uh, conversational expletive, nothing angry, just one of those holy fill in the blank moments. And I just simply invited her to close her eyes. And take this moment to yourself to decide the meaning, the understanding, the lessons and learnings from this experience today. And only as your mind, all levels, have integrated this change once and for all, only as all levels of your mind understand that you will never smoke a cigarette ever again in your life. Well, that's the only moment those hands will easily become free and relax comfortably back in your lap. She sat there for like two or three minutes and then the hands parted and then the work was done. Let me actually uh, do something here. Let me open something up here. Uh, you you got to see this. Uh, let me open it up on the other screen. I'm going two monitors here. Let's see. Virginia hypnosis, testimonials. I'm going to pull up her actual uh, testimonial letter so you can see it here. Yeah, there's Stephanie. Uh, what is she, uh, Jason worked with me to change exactly what I wanted to change. I couldn't be more pleased with the results. She quit smoking. We're also working on binge eating. Uh, please share how successful hypnosis has been for you. Bizarro, maddeningly successful, parentheses. Is that even a word? Successful. Uh, address the behavior that I wanted to change. I don't recognize these behaviors as part of what I do anymore. I don't even think about smoking. It's foreign to me compared to other methods, gum, medications. I obsessed over cigarettes. I did my, why she choose Virginia? I did my research. Have we succeeded in meeting your expectations? Absolutely exceeded. She'd refer to me and this is the payoff moment. Other comments. Jason knows his shit. So, <laughs> again, sometimes you just have to go surreal. And that's what I mean by that. Really, as I like to say it, sometimes you just got to be a hypnotist. I mean, go to the, the podcast session, I believe part one that I did with Scott Sandland. And I think I recorded that session with Scott a few days after that session with Stephanie. And... It's how I think whether it's he or I or both of us agreed, sometimes there's more showmanship inside of our hypnotherapy session than there is in perhaps even a stage hypnosis show. So this has been when nothing is working. And I know that as you interact with this content, you may find yourself, unfortunately, in that situation. It just happens sometimes. Though what I'd encourage is to take some time and kind of brainstorm for yourself. You know, especially if you're new in hypnosis, I would say this is not a bad strategy, though I'll give you a little filter on it, which would be that if their second session is coming up in a couple of days, maybe call them the day before. And let me tell you the story first. When I was back in the days of theatrical management, I learned to never walk into a dressing room and ask, Hey, just checking in. Is everything all right? Because then they'd be on the guard of going, why? What's happening? So the, excuse me, the magical phrasing is, hey, just checking in to see how well things are going. That's a great phrase. And it's just presupposing that things are going well because they should be. And most often, thankfully, they are going well. 
Though, if you find out that on session uh, the day before, it's Thursday, and they're coming in on Friday, well, that gives you a day or two to kind of prepare, to brainstorm, to think about what you can possibly do with that client. You know, if you did want to do an audio program, you might be able to do it in advance, should you choose, if you don't want to use my technology hacks that I shared inside of this session here today. The other side of it, too, is I'll give you one last final thought that I actually... I used this with a guy about three weeks ago. And yes, I know we're about 40 minutes into this presentation. And let me say it now. I think what I'm about to tell you is perhaps the most uh, beneficial thing you're going to hear in this presentation. So congratulations to those of you that have listened to all the way towards the end. You know, because sometimes there's those moments where just life happens. This guy is a golfer and we're working on resolving anxieties, we're working on some performance enhancement, we're working on standard sports stuff. And basically, he had the most abysmal game uh, from our, we've been working for a while now, uh, from session four to session five. Everything has been going wonderfully well until now. Though, and I say this not to excuse myself, not to excuse myself of any uh, connection to this, Yet it was a day that it was like 105 degrees outside, it had just rained, it was really, really muddy, and he wasn't playing with his own clubs. You know, sometimes there's a pretty good reason why things are a little off. You know, I, I can tell the brief story of a woman who I worked with that we were working to instill a more positive outlook on life, a more uh, abundant mindset, law of attraction, all that good, happy stuff. And... She's in front of me, and I think we had done like five sessions. It's the fourth session. And I mean, thank God no one was hurt. Yet her family in the minivan, the minivan was sideswiped by an 18-wheeler. It flips over five times and lands on the tires. The tires are all busted, and the family maybe has a couple of bruises. The van is totaled. The van will never drive again. But hallelujah, no one is dead. No one is injured beyond some awkward bruises. Seatbelts did their job. Airbags did their job. And she's there in front of me and she's going, I thought this would have been going so much better by now. And it's a moment where unless I had delivered the next thing I was about to I'm about to tell you, all could have been lost. Because the reframe that I simply share is, you know what, this may sound odd, but I'm happy. I'm glad that we have this little hiccup on this massive, massive atrocity. No, I'm glad we had this challenge while we're still working together. Because we could have been working together if we had started a month early, this event, you know, would have happened after we had worked together. And how great is it that today, in addition to continuing your process, we can spend some time directly on this or any other events like it that may happen in the future. So examples of this. You know, maybe there's a holiday in between times where you're working with clients for weight loss. And, you know, again, the story I love of the guy who goes, I enjoyed the hell out of it, you know, to take that moment and enjoy the occasional appropriate, again, occasional indulgence. Um, here's the moment where I had a guy freaking out. I love this uh, freaking out because he smoked a cigar like eight months after our stop smoking cigarette session. And he insisted he had to come in. I'm on the phone going, you've had one in the last eight months. It's a cigar. Buy the best one you could afford. And it's still he wants to come in. And Waylon Jennings, if you've got the money, honey, I got the time. So it's he's in front of me. And again, to have that frame of how good is it that we get to address this while we're still in process. And the moment you say that, it just cuts all the tension out of that experience. So if there is a, quote, it hits the fan moment, you know, that's a great, great thing to say to somebody. You know what? That probably was rather uncomfortable for you. However, it's great that we get to address it while we're still working together. I'm telling you, if there's one takeaway from this webinar presentation, that's the one to use.
So share your comments, share your feedback inside of the workers Facebook group. Uh, be sure to vote on future presentations and again, continue to scan through all of the material here in Hypnotic Workers. Also, it's like the uh, piano player at the bar. I take requests. This is a growing library. So as you notice things that you want to see more work on, let me know. It might be a webinar. I may just produce a whole module around it. It's Jason Lynette. This has been the Hypnotic Workers August 2016 webinar. Keep listening to the Work Smart Hypnosis podcast. See you next time. Jason Lynette here, and thank you once again for interacting with this program. This has been When Nothing is Working. And hopefully as you interact with these uh, themes and as you integrate these strategies into your sessions, you too can hedge off that dreaded issue when nothing is working. And once again, always work from that mindset that it's not the hypnosis that's not working, it's the process that needs to be modified. And to better enhance your process, once again, head over to hypnoticworkers.com. That is the entire digital access library to my hypnotherapeutic training. Everything from inductions to deepeners to change strategies you will not find anywhere else, plus client sessions that are fully demonstrated, explained, and transcribed from start to finish. Check that out at hypnoticworkers.com. Get started for just $47 in our online interactive community, and we look forward to having you there. Hypnoticworkers.com. Thanks for listening to the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast at WorkSmartHypnosis.com.